LJ Shorts. Yanis Kalpusas and Iter Maman will be presenting their articles, International Criminal Law and the Violence Against Migrants, and The Right to Perform Rescue at Sea, Jurisprudence and Drowning. Both articles appeared in the special issue, Border Justice, Migration and Accountability for Human Rights Violations in April 2020. In a nutshell, what is your article about? My article is about uh, looking into whether the conceptual and doctrinal uh, tool set of international criminal law, which includes heavy and expressive concepts such as crimes against humanity, can be used to adequately describe uh, the policies of migration control and the violence, uh, the distanced violence against migrants that Western European states have developed over the last uh, number of years. My own article, which was developed largely in conversation with Yanis, so it's really uh, very nice that we're here together, has to do with uh, this concept of distance, but in a sense, it tries to ask, how do we close that distance? So as advocates um, in the recent years have mainly thought of grounding as an issue of migrant or refugee rights, I kind of propose in this article to shift the perspective and see whether a focus on the volunteers that come to rescue these people and their rights allows us to, in some cases, perhaps expand uh, the scope of protection by uh, law. So I discover in this article that somehow, if we look at the rights of volunteers coming for the rescue, and especially their rights to freedom of association and freedom of expression as part of what they're doing, part of the solidarity that we're, uh, they're showing towards migrants, uh, we find that we may expand a little bit the scope uh, of duties towards the drowning migrants, expand the scope of jurisdiction of European courts towards them, and trigger duties of rescue under, under the law of the sea. So there is some benefit, some strategic benefit to look at it from that perspective. What's at stake and why now? So this work uh, is, has developed indeed in collaboration with uh, Itamar, both in a, in, a, in a scholarly fashion associated with practices in Greece and in a more practical activist fashion associated with uh, Australian uh, policies and in the context of, a, of an organization, the Global Legal Action Network, that we're both part of. And we think the stakes are quite significant. And I would say that they are significant on two levels. One is uh, whether international criminal law can stop focusing almost exclusively on types of violence that are, we characterize and we understand as spectacular and are wielded mostly in the global south and can address the types of more organized and structural violence that the global north and western states are, um, in this case, encouraging and perpetrating. And the second set of the stakes has to do with, indeed, addressing and traveling back that distance that these states are creating through migration policy, either through um, externalizing practices of migration detention, arbitrary migration detention, or through stepping back and allowing individuals to die and suffer through the process of trying to reach a safer shore. The moment when uh, I started working on this was a moment in which we saw a growing rate of drownings in the Mediterranean alarmingly, constantly, and, and at the same time, governments were cracking down in an unprecedented way upon uh, the rescue volunteers that uh, tried to provide help to these people. So we saw confiscations of vessels, the Juventa notably. We saw uh, indictments also in that case in Greece. Um, we saw arrests and a lot of different measures aimed to deter these people from taking action. And I was invited at that time by Die Linke, the, the left bloc in the German Bundestag, to discuss these developments. And I wanted to convey to the listeners in that event that what they're doing is not simply just about um, a kind of help to these people in need, but it is also about the scope of freedoms and liberties that they have in their own countries. And that what they do, furthermore, is not just um, in expectation that a law is applied, it has direct influence on what the scope of law will ultimately be. Where do we go from here? When I wrote this article, 
um, we had a lot of crossings in the Mediterranean and a, a rate of grounding was much higher. Now we have new measures of immobility imposed uh, mainly due to COVID. Uh, so the focus on migrants at sea is less important in terms of numbers. However, um, the focus on their presence, the presence of volunteers that are working for them and uh, the way that that will change uh, modes of collecting evidence, uh, a kind of transparency and um, resultingly a kind of accountability are still very, very important. So we see this in the pushbacks on the Greek front after uh, the COVID-19 uh, crisis began and since. And we see this now in Moria where uh, uh, after the camp on Lesbos has burned down, there have been a lot of measures of keeping uh, volunteers uh, that are acting for migrants and refugees out of the area. And I think that is something that I want to continue to study, uh, the way that uh, the immobility imposed by COVID, the presence of uh, volunteers that are helping and assisting migrants and migrants and refugees themselves um, kind of uh, have this kind, kind of interconnected uh, dynamic that changes uh, ultimately the scope of jurisdiction by European courts and also domestic courts in some ways. And this is my research agenda uh, concerning border justice and uh, the COVID-19 crisis in uh, the next kind of intervention that I will offer on this issue. So the goal of my research has been to mobilize these concepts and institutions of international criminal law to try to address this uh, organized, distanced, banal type of violence. Uh, I'm not very optimistic that this is happening. Uh, it seems that the actually existing institutions of international criminal law uh, only focus on the most spectacular types of violence, as is perhaps illustrated by the um, IC prosecutors focus on Libyan actors. Uh, and these, indeed, types of violence continue to exist alongside those more organized structural types of violence. The most shocking recent example being the American uh, practice of forced sterilization, which was recently revealed. But I think it really remains a, a, a key task to try to use the doctrinal and the institutional tools that we have. And international criminal law does provide some of these in order to try to describe, to express, and to address both the gravity of organized forms of violence and the complex network of behavior and um, participation of different actors in the uh, violent policies of migration control. Who inspires you? Right, it's not Bono, uh, I can tell you that. Um, I suppose I am I am inspired by individuals who have a strong moral compass, but who wear it lightly and who are guided in their actions in a way that is not self-righteous, is not earnest, but is quite clearly showing a reflection on the moral consequence of their thinking and their actions. Uh, I could search for names in this context, or, but I would rather leave it at that. What are the most promising developments in society at the moment? It's hard to answer this question at this moment in time. Um, however, uh, oftentimes in our um, community of uh, advocates for migrants and refugees, there is this kind of uh, cynical reaction that, that things are only always going uh, from the bad to the worse. And uh, when we discuss this among ourselves, I often um, kind of encourage myself and others to look at our cities um, in, you know, all different parts of the world, including Europe, including the United States, inclu including um, at least some parts of the Middle East, where uh, diversity and you know ethnic uh, pluralism is thriving uh, from the ground up, and so even in times where the top on the top down level uh, we see new form measures of uh, bordering and border violence seemingly always becoming worse uh, on the bottom up level it's hard to imagine that this kind of 
um, pluralism on the basis of cities will be ever uh, reversed. And I think it's here to stay. And I think it's a cause for me uh, for optimism um, in terms of my own uh, conviction as a certain kind of cosmopolitan. Thank you.